I'm going to show you everything you need to start a new chapter in your plant journey. Let's talk about LECA and Semihydro. Hey, Lee here helping you become a better plant parent, and LECA stands for Lightweight Expanded Clay Aggregate. LECA can have an average startup cost of around $100. Now I don't want that to scare you off just yet, because it's really important to know that the clay can be washed and reused. Also a lot of these materials you'll only need to buy once every three to four years depending on how many plants you actually have. And you really do need to compare that with soil plants. Think about how much money you're spending on every few seasons on different soil amendments over the course of several years. Here are all the materials that you'll need. Your plants cannot just live in water indefinitely. They'll eventually need nutrients to grow and this liquid nutrient panel will get your plants what they need to grow and thrive. Super Thrive is a fertilizer solution that assists with stimulating root growth when transferring plants into a new medium. LECA can be found at IKEA in small bags for a fairly inexpensive price. I've used their brand and I've used a Grow It brand which can be found on Amazon in a 40 liter bag for around $39. You'll need a pH testing kit to ensure that your water is safe for your plants. Liquid fertilizer over time changes the pH level and it's also important to know that most tap water is already a little bit basic. The kit I recommend in the comments down below is convenient since it has everything in it, but you can save a few dollars by just getting pH down and some paper testing strips. You can use any plastic planters that you already own, but to get more oxygen to your roots I do really recommend using mesh planters. Another option is to buy self-watering pots, which can come in different sizes. You will need a few 1 gallon or 4 liter water jugs to make your nutrients, and trust me, this will make the entire process much more streamlined. Now that we have all our materials ready, let's mix our nutrients. I like to prep my water from the night before. I let the jug sit out overnight with the caps off so that any extra chlorine in the water can evaporate. Now you don't need to do this, but I do like to make sure that the fewer things that are there to harm my plants, the better. We need to start with adjusting the pH balance of the water. This is the most complex portion, but you will only need to do this once. Your tap water will likely be between a 7 and a 7.9. Anything higher than a 7 is basic, 7 to 14. Anything lower than 7 is acidic. We will need to use pH down to make our water slightly acidic between 5.5 and 6.5 pH is our goal. The tap water in my city is at 7.4 pH. I always add 35 drops of pH down to my water. When you're testing your water yourself, make sure you start off slow. So add about 5 to 10 drops of pH down, retest your water, and then continue adding more drops until you're at your perfect level. You'll only need to do this once because you're going to write down exactly how many drops of pH down you need to add to adjust your water. What I did is rip the label off of my water, added a piece of tape, and just wrote down to add 35 drops to pH balance my water every single time. With this specific testing kit that I use, you need to fill about half of the container and then add 3 to 5 drops of the testing solution. Compare the color in the tube with the color on the testing solution bottle to get your reading. And a really important note, pH down is corrosive, so do not get it on your skin. If it gets into your mouth or your eyes, you should probably go to a hospital. Be extremely careful. I've been using General Hydroponics and its three panel flora nutrient series. I'm going to be making two separate mixes. One is going to be a mix that I make for new cuttings and plants just starting off in LECA. I call this my seedling mix. And the other will be for plants with better developed root systems and I call that my full mix. When you have a new plant, you need to give it time to adjust. When putting a plant into LECA for the first time, it needs time to adjust as well. You need to give it a lower concentration of the nutrients or else you could be in danger of over fertilizing your plant. Take some time to read the instructions of your nutrient series. Most require you to add the nutrients in a specific order as well. For my seedling mix, I need to add one quarter teaspoon starting with the Flora Micro. I've labeled my bottles by numbering the caps and just make sure that you don't get those mixed up. When you add a nutrient, you need to close the bottle and shake to mix it well. You also need to wash off your measuring equipment. 
This is to avoid nutrient lockout. If you mix your nutrients together before diluting them in water, it could make your plants unable to absorb the nutrients. So again, please read the instructions carefully. One quarter teaspoon of Flora Grow, shake, clean your tools, and one quarter teaspoon of Flora Bloom, shake, clean your tools. After your nutrient series is mixed, you can add one quarter teaspoon of Super Thrive to help your plants adjust to its new medium. Finally, if you haven't done this already, you can pH balance your solution. Since I've done this before, I know that I need to add 25 drops of pH down. It isn't recommended that you use pH down directly into your nutrient solution, so what I do is I take a quarter cup of water, add my pH down to that, and add it to my nutrient solution. I just need to make sure I leave a little bit of room so that it doesn't overflow. When you're making your full mix, all the same rules apply. We add one teaspoon of each of our nutrient series, shaking each time, and cleaning our measuring tool each time. Again, I'm going to add one quarter teaspoon of Super Thrive and use the same method to pH balance my water. I keep these three bottles with me to maintain my plants in semi-hydro. A seedling mix, a full mix, and pH adjusted water. If you have a lot of plants in semi-hydro, it may be wise to keep more of these on hand because you'll be measuring and mixing these ingredients less frequently. The next step is preparing your LECA. When the clay rubs together, clay dust can come off of the LECA and you don't want to get that in your semi-hydro solution, so you need to wash off the LECA first. Make sure that you do this outside as well because when the clay dust settles, it clumps together and it can really ruin your plumbing. Take it outside and run water onto it until it runs clear. This LECA is already clean, but if you're in a condo like me, you could put your LECA in a bucket and let it soak. Swish it around outside and then dump the water. You probably want to disinfect your LECA as well, so you can run some boiling water over it and let that soak for a few minutes. Some also suggest letting your LECA soak for a few hours. I've never done this and it's probably not necessary, but if you like, you could let your LECA soak while you're making your nutrients. At this point, I'm sure you're so excited to get your new cutting into LECA, but I really do recommend water propagating your plant first to get some roots. You can put it directly into LECA, but you do run a higher risk of letting your plant cutting rot. You will need a pot. You can use these net pots for better air circulation, but I actually do really like these tall square planters. Fill your planter with clean LECA about one third of the way, put your cuttings on top, and then fill in the rest with LECA. You can also tap your plant pot on a flat surface, and this will help the LECA settle and you'll have fewer open spaces. And just like any new cutting, you will want to choose the appropriate size pot. Start off small and then upgrade the size as your roots start to grow. Just like any plant, you can run the risk of giving yourself root rot if you choose a pot that's too big for your plant. The reason why you're filling your pot with one third of LECA first is because you're going to have a water reservoir filled to your one third line. You want to avoid having your roots sitting in the nutrients. You want them resting just above so that they can absorb nutrients through the LECA using capillary action. The goal is to keep your water level around this line. You do have some wiggle room as your water level eventually gets lower over time, but this is the ideal place that you want it. Monitor your water levels and take a note of how frequently you'll have to fill your water reservoir. While refilling your reservoir is extremely important, you should also know that you don't always need to refill it with your nutrients. The reason why I keep a third jug of pH adjusted water is that I usually refill my reservoir using the pH adjusted water. I do clean and then refill my reservoir with the nutrient series about every two weeks, but I have gone three weeks and I haven't really noticed any negative side effects with my plants. You don't need to consistently top up your reservoir using your nutrient water because it's also a possibility that your plant can't absorb all of those nutrients. Eventually you'll start to see salt and mineral buildup that looks like a white crust on top of your LECA. And that brings us to cleaning our plant on flush day. Like I said, I clean my plants every two weeks by flushing the unabsorbed nutrients out of the system. Take your plant to the sink and make sure you have close to room temperature water as you can, not too hot, not too cold, and run your plant under the tap for about a minute. This cleans off the roots and gets rid of any mineral buildup on your LECA. 
Once your plant is clean, you can clean the sides of the container if you want, and then you're ready to restart the whole process again. You can also transfer a plant living in soil into LECA. I choose not to do this myself, but you can take it out of its pot, remove every last bit of soil until the roots are all white by washing it in the sink. It sounds like a nightmare and you do run the risk of putting your plant into shock and delaying its new growth until it adjusts to its new medium. When your plants are in LECA, especially if you're using net pots, your roots will come out of the sides and the bottom of your pot. When your roots start to go down into your nutrient water, those roots could end up rotting. You'll need to monitor this and then realign your roots. Take the plant out of your pot and put the LECA at the bottom third of your container. Put the plant back on top and fill in the rest as usual. Eventually, you'll need to repot your plant and move to a larger size. And it can be tricky to know when, but I'm really using the same rationale when I think of choosing a larger pot with soil. If your plant has become much larger, it's thriving, and the roots are taking up most of the space in the pot. You should be repotting your plant about once a year and go up one inch or two inches in size. All the links to the products I use are down in the description below. And with that, you should have the basics to start and maintain plants in semi-hydro. Like the video if it was helpful and consider subscribing. See you next time.